In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the angle of elevation and angle of depression. So here we have somebody looking up. Okay, this would be the angle of elevation. Okay, the observer is looking up at the object. And when the observer is looking up, this is our line of sight. And with uh, the horizontal drawn at the level or at the height of which they're looking up, the angle is right here. So in order to have the angle of elevation, we need the observer to be looking up and we need that horizontal drawn so that we can form an angle. So in looking down, our horizontal would be here. And this is the angle of depression. Okay, here's theta, here's our horizontal, and line of sight. Together, to the right, we have our two horizontals, which will always be parallel. Horizontal lines are parallel. And we have this angle here. Well, if the observer's up here looking down, this is the angle of depression. And this person at the bottom of the stairs is looking up. This is the angle of elevation. The two angles are in two separate triangles. So we have this triangle right here, OK, with this being the 90 degree angle. And we have this triangle here. And since these are parallel, this angle here would be congruent to that angle there because they are alternate interior angles. Example number one. This is a bad picture, so I do apologize. But Bobby is holding his kite four feet above the ground. So this should read right here, four feet. So this distance is four feet, as shown in the accompanying diagram. The distance between his hand and a point directly under the kite is 105 feet. So this should read 105 feet. Part A, if the angle of elevation to the kite, so this angle right here, is 65 degrees, find the height of the kite H to the nearest foot. And then part B, find in the nearest foot how much string extends from Bobby's hand to the kite. So for part A in finding H, which goes from here all the way down, what we do is we find this length right here that's a part of this triangle. So I'm going to call this A. So H equals A plus that 4 because he was holding the kite 4 feet above the ground. So to find A, so within the triangle we have opposite over adjacent. We do not have the hypotenuse, so that would be tangent. So tangent of 65 degrees equals A over 105. Put this over 1, cross multiply. A times 1 is A, and A is equal to 105 tangent of 65 degrees. OK? H is going to be 4 plus 105 tangent of 65 degrees. So let's go to the calculator. 4 plus 105 tangent of 65 degrees. 229, we're rounding to the nearest foot, so 229.1 would be approximately 229 feet. For part B, Part B says how much string extends from Bobby's hand to the kite. 
that would be here. So I'm going to call that B. So that would be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And using the angle of 65 in this side, okay, I don't want to use A. I know I just found that, but what if I'd made a mistake? So I want to use what's given, and that would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So it's going to be the cosine of 65 degrees equals adjacent, which is 105, over B. Cross multiply, we have B times the cosine of 65 degrees equals 105. Divide by the cosine of 65. And typing that on the calculator, 105 divided by the cosine of 65. We get 248.45. We're rounding here to the nearest foot, so that'd be approximately 248 feet. Dot, dot, dot. Rounding, um, it's approximately 248 feet of string. Okay, number two. It says, Adam and Brian are standing some distance apart on the same side of a building that's 50 meters tall. From where Adam stands, the angle of elevation at the top of the building is 30. From where Brian stands, the angle is 60. What is the distance between Adam and Brian to the nearest tenth of a meter? Well, we have overlapping triangles. Remember, this 30 degree angle goes with the larger one. Okay? And the 60 degree angle goes with the smaller one. And starting with the smaller one, I can find, let's call this Z, okay, this distance right here. And finding Z in blue, I would use, since I have opposite over adjacent, that would be the tangent ratio. So the tangent of 60 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. So it'd be Z tan of 60 degrees equals 50. Divide by the tangent of 60. Okay, we're going to get an approximation. I'm going to leave it exact for right now. And I'll tell you why. I'm looking for X. Remember, in pink, this gives me this whole length. So I'm going to call that whole length y. In order to get x, I need to take y and subtract z. So I'm going to leave everything exact. y is still a tangent ratio. So we're going to use 30 degrees. The tangent of 30 degrees equals 50 over y. So cross multiply in y tangent of 30 degrees equals 50, divide by the tangent of 30, and we get y equals 50 over tangent of 30 degrees. So now I'm going to go to the calculator and subtract these two. So x equals 50 over tangent of 30 degrees minus 50 over the tangent of 60 degrees. So using grouping symbols, 50 So 50 divided by the tangent of 30 minus 50 divided by the tangent of 60. And we get 57.7350269.2. We're rounding to the nearest tenth of a meter, so it'll be approximately 57.7. So they are approximately 
57.7 meters apart. Number three. Standing on the gallery of a lighthouse, which is the deck at the top of a lighthouse, a person spots a ship at an angle of depression of 20 degrees. So a person's up here looking down at the ship, and this angle, so angle of depression is formed by a horizontal, is going to be 20 degrees. The lighthouse is 28 meters tall. So this lighthouse, 28 meters. And it sits on a cliff 45 meters tall as measured from sea level. So this is 45 meters from sea level. What is the horizontal distance to the nearest tenth of a meter between the lighthouse and the ship? So this horizontal distance here. Okay, so this is forming a right triangle. Because this horizontal distance is parallel to this, this is also 20 degrees because they're alternate interior. And we have to find this, so I'll call this x. We have the side opposite over adjacent, which is tangent. Now, if part of that distance is 28 and then 45 together, that whole side of the triangle is going to be 73. So the tangent of 20 degrees equals 73 over x. Putting it over 1. We have x tangent of 20 degrees equals 73. Divide by the tangent of 20 degrees. So on the calculator, 73 divided by tan of 20, we get 200.565816. We are rounding to the nearest meter. So that'd be approximately 201 meters. And last one. From an angle of depression of 40 degrees, John watches his friend approach his building. So I'm going to draw a building. So he's standing on the rooftop and he sees his friend. So let's draw the ground. So his friend is here. He sees his friend at an angle of depression of 40 degrees. So looking down at his friend, drawing the horizontal, we have an angle of depression of 40 degrees. The rooftop is 16 meters from ground level. So this distance, 16 meters. And John's eye level is about 1.8 meters from the rooftop. So his eye level, 1.8 meters from the top. So together, that's 17.8 meters. What is the distance, the nearest meter, tenth of a meter, between John's friend and the building? So I'm looking for this distance right here. So we have the building which is standing upright, so it's a 90 degree angle, and then this angle of, okay, depression, 40 degrees, and because this horizontal is parallel to that horizontal, we know this is going to be 40 degrees as well. So I'm looking for this, I'll call this x, and we have the side opposite over adjacent, which is tangent. So the tangent of 40 degrees equals 17.8 over x. Cross multiplying x tangent of 40, 1 times 17.8 is 17.8. Dividing by the tangent of 40, Seventeen point eight divided by tangent of forty. We get twenty one point two to the nearest tenth because to the right of the two is a one. It's going to be approximately twenty one point two. So John's friend is about twenty one point two meters from the building.